President Paul Bia's announcement of a national dialogue on the 10th of September in Cameroon to address the anglophone crisis is really important. On the ground, it's been very difficult uh, to reduce the violence between the army and the armed separatists, and lots of people are suffering. A massive humanitarian crisis has developed. Uh, the last time I went to Cameroon, I actually feel that this conflict is having a very strong uh, negative impact on the livelihoods of people on the ground. For example, I tried to go to Kumba. Kumba is in the southwest region. Uh, it's one of the major towns in Anglophone Cameroon. But the separatists had uh, declared a lockdown. Uh, these lockdowns are kind of enforced long-term ghost towns and it was impossible for people to leave Boya, which is the capital of the southwest region, and to go into Kumba uh, just in the beginning of September. Massive disruption to the daily lives of people, massive uh, economic uh, downturn in those regions. Ordinary people are afraid of being attacked by the army, of being attacked by the separatists, and it's very, very difficult. Now, this national dialogue is a start, it's a recognition that there's a problem which needs to be looked into and that uh, the military response is not only going to be sufficient, uh, but they need to actually talk among Cameroonians and among Anglophones. But there have been concerns about those who are taking part in this dialogue. Uh, people have pointed out that the real protagonists, those who hold massive sway in the Anglophone regions, are not yet involved in this dialogue. The Cameroon dialogue, it's uh, something which several partners in the country have called for including the, the Catholic Church to uh, Cardinal Tumi with his Anglophone General Conference initiative. Uh, we think it's important for the government to give more time for the Anglophone General Conference, the AGC, to meet and consolidate positions amongst all Anglophones so that the people can have the confidence that their views are being taken into account. And when the AGC meets, uh, it's probably going to silence a bit of the more radical voices and give room for people to really express themselves and from the government to have more certainty about what Anglophones in their majority are really willing to accept as a way forward in this crisis. Now on the agenda, uh, there is a great demand for, for some form of autonomy, which uh, President Bia himself has recognized. They need to look at the form of the state, how uh, resources are managed, development, issues of grassroots uh, democracy, representation, how the law and education is managed and run in the Anglophone regions. These are some of the things that will make real sense to the people. But now you also have things which have been created from the from the crisis. You have uh, combatants, you have militants, rebels. They also need to think carefully about the Anglophone leaders who are in prison and those who are in the diaspora. How do they get access to the country? Some of the people who are still agitating in the ground who are protesting that it will be difficult for them to give up the fight given that some of their leaders are now incarcerated and others are unable to come into the country. Without finding a, a, some sort of resolution and closure for these people, it might be increasingly difficult to get this sorted.